Hey guys, welcome back. This is Naresh. So we will continue our series for the API questions and answers. And if you have not watched the video one and video two of those series, so I will request to please go in the playlist of the series and first look into video one and video two, and then you can come to this video because this is our last video of this interview series. Okay. So the question number 21, we have already done the 22. So we'll start with that. Question number 21, some of the API examples. So there are many API examples which you can give. Example, there is a Google Maps API, there is an Amazon Advertising API, there is a Twitter API, and there is a YouTube API. So these APIs are available from these company, which we can use for our testing purpose. All right. And uh, what is can you differentiate between API testing and unit testing because sometimes uh, you know somebody like you know sometimes people are confused between the API testing and the unit testing but there is a difference between the two okay we cannot consider API testing as a unit testing why because unit testing is performed by a tester where every functionality is tested separately okay it's tested in a unit level while API testing is performed by a tester for end-to-end -end testing of a functionality. Okay, we do not separate each functionality uh, one by one, but we test it entirely end-to-end. -end. Okay. All right. In unit testing, have a limited scope of testing. Thus, basic functionality is only considered for testing, and API testing have a broader scope of testing. And unit testing is a form of white box testing. API testing is called a black box testing. Usually unit testing is done before the code is included in the build while API testing is performed after the build is ready for testing. In unit testing, the source code is involved in the form of testing. In API testing, source code is not involved in the form of testing. So basically, if you say that unit testing is something which is mainly by a tester or a developer, because if a developer is some developing something, right? Let's say there is a calculator class, right? And that developer has created one particular method for that calculator. Let's say they have uh, created a method of multiply. Okay, they have created a method of multiply uh, on that calculator class. Now he has to make sure that multiply method is working fine. Let's assume that in multiply, multiply method, he is also calling the addition method for some reasons, right? So you don't have to worry how the addition is working. Okay, he just have to concentrate on the multiply function. And for addition, maybe if the addition is not created already, he will create a mock of the addition. Okay, and for that, he should have, uh, you know, uh, like a source code of the calculator class in his uh, workspace. Okay, that is called a unit testing. But what integration testing means that when a person is calling a method of multiply, it would call multiply method, which will call also the addition method. And there is no mocking done of the addition method. It will be the actual addition method also. So basically in the API testing, we will do an integration of the addition and multiplication and then we get a result. Okay, and we check the entire calculator. We are not just checking the multiplier. We will check the multiplier. We will check the addition. We will check the results and all those things. So those are the integration testing. All right. So basically unit testing is done mostly by developers, which I have seen sometime testers, but mostly by developers and integration testing is done mostly by testers and unit testing is done before the code is deployed. Integration is testing is done after the code is deployed, but it is just a 90%, but 10% I have even seen that integration testing even happened before the code is deployed. Okay. What is rest assured? So now we are moving to rest assured. So in the past around eight to nine videos, we have seen how the rest assured work. So let's, it will be a summary of what we have done. In order to test the rest API, we have a rest assured library. Okay. It is developed by JWay company. And it is a powerful catalyzer for automate, automated testing for the REST services. REST Assure provides a lot of nice features such as DSL-like syntax, XPath validations, specification reuse, easy file upload. So these are all the features of this, uh, this REST Assured library. Okay. REST Assured has a Gherkin type syntax, which is a BDD. Okay, so we have seen that whenever we are writing something on the rest assured is it is on the BDD style, right? 
so it is in the BDD style and uh, you get a JSON response as a string which you can convert into a JSON path so it is very easy to access those uh, response which we get you know from the rest assured so we can convert that into JSON path and we can access that on the basis of JSON path very easily which we have also seen the previous video of the rest assured okay all right so the next question is how to make a post request with rest assured all right so when we are making a post post request there are few of the things which we have to take care of so it should have a uri which is basically a url and it should have a body in a key value in a key value format and uh, we can also set the content type if it is json or it is xml like application json or application xml all right and uh, we can give the authentication credentials if there is an authentication required there okay what are the different responses code in rest assured so we have seen response code like 200 201 for the success response so we call it as 2xx and 1xx for just for informational 3xx is for redirection which says indicate that the client must take some additional action okay in order to complete that request so request is not completed client has to take some additional action in that 400 is a client error okay so this category of error states could point a finger at the client so client has made the mistake because of which we get this error 5xx is a server error the server takes the responsibility of the error so both are basically error but this but the origin in, origin of the error is from the client for 4xx and 5xx is from the server side okay what can we have in the given in the rest assured so see we can type even without even given when then but our rest assured give us a power that we can write the program in the bdd style so mostly what we give and given we give and given which is headers we give parameters parameters can be a path parameter which is under the curly brace it can be a query parameter with question mark and it can be a parameter with cookies okay so we can give all in the given and given can also include the body which is one of the important part of the post method okay and uh, it can have content type and it can have some other methods like relax HTTPS validation other things all right and uh, in post we should not send the data in the URL so it's a bad practice we don't have to do any we don't have to send anything in the URL of a post everything what we need to do we have to send it in the body and in the header okay what can we have in when so what we do include in when so in when basically we hit the URL we hit the URI and uh, we call this get method post method put method and delete method to hit the URI and what about then in then we mostly do assertions okay all right so now we will talk more about soap also now the last two questions are basically on the soap so what is soap the soap is a simple object access protocol so its full form is simple object access protocol is defined as an xml based protocol okay it is known for designing and developing web services as well as en enabling communication between application developed on different platform using various programming languages it is both platform and language independent so xml is also a platform independent it's a language independent also okay so soap is used for developing the web services and also for the communication purpose all right so now question come to mind sometime what should we use should we use soap or should we use rest api while developing the application so it depends upon your requirement what you should use okay so see here are the differences and according to that the developer has to take decision what they want to use if they want to use soap they can use soap if they want to use rest they can use rest but whatever they you know create we have to test according to that okay if they are creating soap we'll be testing soap if they're creating rest we'll be creating rest right so soap is a heavyweight choice for web service access it provides the following advantage and disadvantage soap is not very easy to implement so yes it is not a very easy task to implement soap service it requires more bandwidth and resources soap message request is processed slower as compared to rest and it does not use web caching mechanism 
rest in rest we use some caching mechanism okay caching means you know some of the data for some of the data it cache those uh, data somewhere like on the client side also it can cache so rest does not have to go to the server again and again for that particular data okay so in the rest there is a caching mechanism available which is very fast in soap there is no caching mechanism ws security while well, soap support ssl just like rest rest it also supports ws security which has some enterprise security features so this is one of the feature which soap support that is ws security which is not in rest ws aut automatic transaction so it needs a acid transaction over a service and you are going to need soap so for ws automatic transaction we again need soap okay so it is basically more secure as compared to rest WS reliable messaging if your application needs asynchronous processing and guaranteed level of reliability and security rest doesn't have a standard messaging system and expects client to deal with communication failure by retrying so if you have a more reliable asynchronous call you should use soap for that okay maybe for messaging for sending the sms to the client or sending some notification you can use a soap a uh, soap api instead of rest if security is a major concern and resources are not limited then we should use soap web service okay now there are some advantage of rest also so what are the advantages let's see since rest use standard http it is much simpler so it's very simple to implement rest all right rest is easier to implement require less bandwidth and resource rest permit many different data format whereas soap only permits xml all right rest allow better support for browser clients due to support for json so in rest we can use xml we can use json we can use html and there are many more things which can rest support but soap is only supporting xml rest has a better performance and scalability rest reads can be cached soap reads cannot be cached which we have talked before if security is not a major concern we and we have a limited resource we should use rest okay if you want to create an api that will be easily used by other developers then we should again create rest if we need a stateless crud operation then we go rest rest is commonly used in social media so nowadays 70% of the market is occupied by rest so whatever social media you can think about like web chat uh, public apis like google maps twitter youtube they are all based on rest okay restful web services returns various media types for the same resource depending on the request header parameter okay so it can uh, it can return xml also it can return json also depending upon the way it has been implemented okay rest service are meant to be called by the client side application and not the end user directly so for the rest services we should have a client like a postman or rest assured which can call and it is not an end user directly so this is all our series for the api and rest assured i hope that uh, that will increase your knowledge a bit and if any doubt you can always let me know and uh, if you have not seen the previous video you can just go with the playlist there are two more videos before this video just go through that all right so thank you for watching this video have a great day